Hi friends, welcome to my channel and this time we are going to visit Trankubar. This is the second part of the Kadaikal trip and if you miss out the first part, please check below in the description area to get the video link. Trankubar is 7 km away from the port city of Kadaikal. You can reach Trankubar through Nagapattinam and Pondicherry also. The itinerary given in the description and also I have shown it to the end of this video. So let's start the trip with a pinch full of history. While the stories of the Portuguese, Dutch, French and British establishing trading posts and colonies in India are well known, few people know that so important was India for trade in the medieval period, that every European power wanted a piece of the pie. Even the Danes made an attempt to establish colonies in India, their bid however ended in a financial disaster. Two of the most important Danish settlements in India were Trankubar in Tamil Nadu and Srirampur in Bengal. The success of British, Dutch and French spies trade uh, clearly envied in Denmark by the 17th century. As a result, on March 17, 1616, King Christian IV of Denmark signed a charter for establishing Danish East India Company which would have a monopoly for the spice trade between Denmark and Asia. Hi friends, I reached Trankubar. Let's check it out what it is. Sadly, the venture was a disaster from the very beginning. In 1618, the first expedition sent under Admiral Ove to establish trading station in Sri Lanka got terribly delayed. Two years to reach Sri Lanka and lost half of their crew on the way. They failed to establish any trade with Sri Lanka after that. The last straw in this distress expedition was a battle with Portuguese ships off the coast of Karaikal on the Tamil Nadu coast, where they lost even more men. It was two years later, only in 1620, that the Danish were finally able to establish a presence after negotiation with Nayakas that the ruler of the Tanjavur, who agreed to grant them the village of Taragambadi, that they were allowed to construct a stone fortification here. Taragambadi, formerly Trankubar, is in today's Nagapattinam district of the Indian state of Tamil Nadu. You can only imagine the beauty of the place from its poetic name, Taragambadi. Taragambadi means land of singing waves. Perhaps it was the sound of these singing waves which made the Danish build a massive fort here so big was this fort called the Dansborg that it was the only the second to the largest Danish fort ever built in the history of Denmark. However, the Danish East India Company was not a financial success, as the Danish government and merchant had hoped it would be. Of the 18 ships that departed from the Denmark between 1622 and 1637, only 7 returned. Also, the geographical location of the Trunk River make it vulnerable to high tidal waves, which keeps destroying the buildings in the colony. Deteriorating the financial situation made by the Danish East India Company, Danish make desperate attempt to sell the position to Dutch. By 1650, the Danish East India Company was bankrupted and was abolished by King Frederick II of Denmark. The sleepy colony in Trankwar was unaware of the development is in far off Denmark. For almost 29 years, the colony kept the Danish flag flying and sending report back to home without any reply or for support. And finally, in May 1669, a ship from Denmark arrived. Breaking decades of the isolation, a new Danish East India Company was formed and settlements were built at new places. In 1755, a settlement of Frederick Nagore was established at Srirampur near Kolkata in Bengal. The Danish were very eager to return to Bengal and contacted the Nawab of Bengal, Ali Vardi Khan, with the aim of establishing a new trading post. They succeeded in acquiring rights to Srirampur and the Bengal trade against payment of 2.5% of duty. However, overall financially, the Danish trade did not yield much profits. 
In fact, during the Napoleonic War fought between 1803 and 1815, the British attacked Danish ships and devastated the Danish East India Company's India trade. Between 1801 and 1802, British even occupied Trunkabad and Sirampur. And finally, in 1845, the Danish sold all their position to in India to the British and ceased to be a colonial power. Today, Fort Dansborg, the churches and few houses that stand as a silent testimony to the title Denmark in India. Dens taking active interest in reviving and restoring these old buildings as an important part of shared history.
that's all for this episode. Thanks for your precious time for watching my video. If you like the video and want to get more videos like this, please give a like and subscribe to my channel. And don't forget to click the bell icon to get all the future notification about my freshly created video. So until next episode, bye. Thank you.